Weird Hospital. This story had really happened in 2013. At that moment, I was a guard at a big hospital. On the first day, my leader Oliver had taken me around the hospital and showed me what I had to do. Even though, when you heard about the security guard, you might think this was a simple job, but we had to have a lot of pressure. Once walking along with Oliver by the hallway, I glared at the windows. I saw a weasel running out of the hallway in the middle of the day, and out of the blue, I asked Oliver if he saw the weasel. Look through the glass windows, a weasel was running out there, jumping around very skillfully. I saw a small, bricked road connected by one brick by another around the hospital. It didn't look like a road for humans, that must have been only for the weasel. I was very surprised by that, but Oliver told me calmly that way was designed for weasel only. I asked Oliver was there anything wrong, what was about those weasels? I had been born and raised in the countryside, so that stuff was new to me. But my leader didn't seem to want to speak up about that. He reminded me not to provoke those weasels. He told me that was no point for me to know more about that, so once I saw those weasels, I should pretend not to see, and not to provoke them. I was afraid that if I asked some more questions, I might lose my job at that moment, or it might affect my job in the future. So, I told my leader that I had understood and stopped asking him about the weasels. I had been assigned a night shift. I guarded at the inpatient department. Some other nurses there also taking the night shift like me. I have taken my shift in the surveillance room. There were a bunch of cameras pointing to every angle of the hospital. My job was about watching the whole thing happening at the hospital from the room. If anything happened, I could see them all. From the cameras, I could see there were a bunch of weasels. I had no idea how there was just one or two in the daytime, but at night, they came flooding around the hospital. I could see them all around the surveillance screens at night. Their eyes were green. Once they ran or jumped around, those green glows looked very annoying. Because I worked at night, I had a rest in the daytime and started working at 5 p.m. A few days after working at the hospital at night, I came to the hospital as usual. After reaching the hospital, Oliver had spoken up to me. He told me that I had come at the right time and asked if I smoked the night earlier on the third floor. I had been admonished because he thought I had smoked outside the special treatment room on the third floor. That was pretty surprised to me. Anyway, I had to deny it. I told him I didn't, it wasn't me. Oliver had asked all of the team who took the night shift last night. No one confessed that they had smoked outside on the third floor. That was such nonsense. There was one security crew that had a key to go outside. He asked me that if we didn't do that, then who did? The door was always locked. Finally, we had been showered by scold but the one who smoked the day earlier still could not discover. I tried to keep my eyes on that and found out who that was. That night, I didn't sleep and stared at the screens the whole night. Some nights, I heard an open door sound. I thought someone was stepping in. But once I returned my head, there was no one, no one stepped into the room, but the door was shut, that was irrational. I thought that might be I misheard it and continued to watch the screens. That time, I figured a strange thing. Looking through the camera on the third floor, I saw a man walking by. I followed every single action of that man on the screen. I was pretty sure he wanted to go outside. He was stepping closer to the last room of the third floor, that way headed to the balcony of the third floor but I was confused by his unsteady footsteps. He was walking weirdly. That man wore patient clothes. Why he wanted to go outside of the third floor that late? I had many questions in my head at that moment, but that was not the right time to sit still and do nothing. I had to catch him out and clear everything up. I picked up the baton and ran outside instantly. I ran to the third floor and checked the door to the balcony that was opened already. 
I thought that I could see him in evidence, but I was surprised, I didn't see anyone outside. There were just small glows jumping around the fence, I stepped closer to see what was that. I saw some cigarette butts were scattered on the ground, they were new and still burning. The one who smoked those cigarettes was likely just having a few breaths of them or just burnt them for fun. I saw none of the cigarettes was burnt to the end. That must have been the patient I saw from the surveillance screens earlier, so I came to the patient area of the third floor. Even that was a patient or not, he had broken the hospital's rule. Even though I got a bit angry, I didn't run to the patient room. Firstly, I looked at it through the glass windows. There were two sick beds in the room, that was the special treatment room. Seeing those many complicated types of equipment in the room, I could see that the two patients there were very bad. They were unconscious with a persistent vegetative state. That was strange to me. If these people were in a persistent vegetative state, how they could go outside and smoke. This was the special treatment room. There was no patient's family staying as well. I lightly opened the door and had a look inside. Inside the special treatment room, there was no one except the two unconscious patients. When I was skeptical, I sensed something was touching my pants. I looked down and realized a huge weasel was standing in between my two legs. I got startled and angry. I madly chased it out. I took my baton and tried to catch it, but it had run before me agilely. Suddenly, the huge weasel stopped there and turned back to me. It stared at me with its green, scary eyes. At that moment, I had no idea why my hands and even my body were unable to move once looking at these eyes. I kept that pose for a while. The weasel kept staring at me as well, then it turned its head and ran away. After it ran out, I could pull my consciousness back. I put down my hands, I felt very tired, my power was likely able to escape, I nearly fell down, I had to back to the wall to feel better, my clothes got wet afterward. The day after, my leader came. I had reported what I had experienced the day earlier. Oliver asked if the key was still in its position, the first thing he could think of was the key. If there was no key, no one could open the door to the balcony then. I took the key in front of the leader, I said the key was still there. The key was still in the security room, but there was some weasel's fur on it. The leader requested me to open the surveillance camera and recheck what happened the night earlier. I opened and played the video that we had recorded the night earlier, at that moment, I saw the stranger went to the door. I paused when the man walked to the door for everyone in the crew to see. But when the video played to when he came to the door, there was a noise in the video, and we were pretty unsure if the man opened the door to smoke or not. At that moment, Oliver felt strange as well. Their camera system was always in the best condition. Suddenly, David, one of our members, spoke up to the leader. He thought that might be a shadow made from the weasels. Once he spitted those words out, the leader had admonished him that he was talking bullshit and asked if he wanted to work there. But David didn't stop there. He asked if the leader had forgotten that event. If the leader wanted they do that again, they would burn, he had talked about something I didn't understand. The leader got angry, he stopped David, not recalling that event anymore that loud. He ended up requested David work with me that night. That night, the leader and some of the members of the crew had taken over time. The leader went out and declared that the security crew had to clear that out, who was the smoke spot outside the third floor's balcony. There was no other way to clear it out. No one had spoken about the sudden overtime in front of the leader. And so, the seven of us had stayed over at the hospital that night. I got used to the night shift, so that was just as usual to me. My leader had assigned our tasks clearly. David and I had to stay in the surveillance room and followed if there was anything happened, we would report to him. The rest of the team had been assigned to hide out on the third floor. 
all of us had waited for the man who smoked to appear. While in the surveillance room with David, I asked him about what he said earlier. I had heard that the weasel had burned something, so I wanted to hear more about that. What had happened? Without a hesitation, David told me everything about that. The old people around the hospital had known about that event, that was when the hospital established, that event had put up an argument, the hospital management had wanted to sweep all of those weasels out of there, and those weasels had come back to take the revenge. It turned out people had wanted to chase those weasels out, and then they got a fire without a clue. Since then, one had a gut to provoke the weasel another time. Those weasels came open a lot more than before to the hospital. Even though David told me with a very soft voice, hearing what those weasels had done, I got angry. If that's so, those weasels were really sort of monsters. While we were chatting, out of the blue, there was a weird thing happened on the screen. On the third floor's camera screen, David and I saw some people in the hallway. They were likely to go towards the door to the balcony. I picked up the walkie-talkie and reported what happened to the leader. Three people walked towards the balcony direction. When David and I wanted to back up the others, we intended to take the key with us as well, but the key had disappeared already. I asked where the heck the key was, it was obviously hanging there earlier. I had searched around, but the key was nowhere to be found. Under David's rush, we decided to go to the third floor without the key because we were afraid of Oliver's admonishments. Our members hid at the small corners on the third floor ran there to catch the one who smoked in days. Indeed, the door was opened. Right reaching the balcony, we saw three men were standing at the fence and smoking. Oliver shouted out and ran towards them, who allowed them to smoke at that time, and how they could open the door. Right after hearing Oliver, the three of them fell out on the ground. We ran shortly closer to them to see what happened. Once we looked at those men's faces, my colleagues and I got scared to death and faltered. Those people, what, why? Among those three people on the ground, only one of them was alive. The other two had died already. Oliver had seen they had been sent to the morgue room by his own eyes. While the rest of the crew were frozen from what they had seen, I had heard something moving on the roof likely. I turned to my crew and told them to look at the roof. There were many weasels on the roof. The whole of them stared at us with their green eyes and looked really scary. The leader had reported to the hospital the case the three men had brought to where they should be. The hospital management tried to explain to us that no matter what happened, that kind of weird event should be kept secret. I have worked at the hospital for seven years already. Then, I got used to the fact that I faced weasels everywhere in the hospital. Regarding the hospital's name, I cannot tell you because I had to keep it secret. If I tell you, I might get fired.